Welcome to Perspectives El Paso. I'm Professor Leon Blevins with El Paso Community College Television. Some of you have seen me on this show or out in the community dressed as Uncle Sam, America's favorite uncle. Well, I decided to come today not dressed as Uncle Sam, but uh, we may weave some pictures of me as Uncle Sam into this program as you proceed in watching it. I've interviewed some people here in El Paso uh, that fought in World War II and in Vietnam and Korea and in the Gulf War. And there's some monuments to some of these engagements of American military involvement in defense of our country right here in El Paso at the Trans Mountain Campus. And there's a site there that started out as Flags Across America. And at that site, there has been placed the tallest flagpole on this side of the border with Mexico. I've interviewed some of those people that were in military and their monuments dedicated to them, but I've never interviewed anyone that had anything to do with the construction of those monuments and that location. So I decided to have one of those people involved with that on the program today, John Mimbella. John, I've seen you at some of these events that you and your brothers and other associates uh, with Mimbella contractors have put together. And congratulations on your work and thanks for your work. Oh, thank you. It's thank time you. that you got a thanks on air about that particular work. Oh, thank you. Now, tell us a little bit about how this started. I mentioned uh, there were a couple of people, um, Mr. Soltis and Jimmy Melver, that got this thing going. So they came to you and talked about getting involved in it as a contractor? Correct. Yeah, back in about 2002, I believe, Okay. is when uh, they came to us and said, you know, we think we have a property and, you know, it needs a lot of development and we would like to see, you know, if you could help us uh, get this uh, property uh, ready to develop so that we can uh, put our, our she went in there and look, You went out there and looked at it and said, oh my gosh, what are you talking about? <laughs> oh, oh yes, yeah, it's a big old hole. I mean, it's, you know, it wasn't level, uh, it needed a lot of field dirt, and uh, of course, you know, uh, bringing in the field dirt is the expensive part. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they asked for volunteers first for people to bring in uh, the dirt, but uh, they started bringing in a bunch of trash. Yeah, people were dumping their trash out there. So Correct. <laughs> you had to deal with that. Yes, then we had to, uh, you know, now we had to get rid of the trash. Right and uh, bring in dirt so that we could start uh, actually uh, having a flat area. Did you do any soil testing and things like that that would support such a large flagpole? Oh yes, yes, yeah, we had to get an engineer involved as far as, you know, what size uh, the uh, foundation had to be for this uh, big flagpole. And about how deep is that concrete? Uh, if I remember correctly, it's about uh, 12 feet deep. 12 feet deep. Correct, wow. yes, yes. And then, that's, that's the start. That's the start. You build the base, and you have in your mind or your architectural drawing some of the things you want to do with that site. You don't want to just build a flagpole, right? Correct, yes. Uh, you know, fortunately, we, uh, my brother's an architect and uh, he works uh, with me, uh, for me. And uh, he was the first one to do an actual, you know, sketch of what this could someday be. Mm -hmm. And it's pretty much to what it is today. So we were actually the first ones to come up with the sketch of how eventually uh, everything was going to look. That there would be monuments? There would be monuments, there would be uh, the state flags around it also. Okay. And uh, so, you know, he's the one, we're the ones that came up with the design. And of course now we need it was the uh, funds to do it. Okay, now in 2004 I believe it was, they raised the first flag. I was there for that. So huge, it took like 70 people or so to get under it, to get it ready to raise. It's a huge task. Uh, so. When you begin to lay out the monuments, which was the first monument that was built? I, I think it was the uh, the World War uh, One or, or Two memorial. Okay, so that was the one first of the World one. Wars. Okay. Yes, yes, and then from there, I believe it was the uh, Korean. I was there for the dedication of the Korean. The Korean, yeah. and of course, there's the women's. Uh, Warriors. I was there for that. That was the same day as the Korean monument. They dedicated the women warriors. Correct. Correct. That was that was, and then of course the Statue of Liberty replica. Okay. And uh, and now there's the Vietnam uh -huh. uh, memorial. Okay. Yeah. Well, you can put that aside. We can just have a conversation about some of these. Do you have a favorite? I. 
probably have to say uh, Vietnam. Were you, were you in service? I wasn't, but that was actually my era. You uh, know. The era, the Vietnam era. Yeah, the Vietnam era was, uh, you know, my era. And I can uh, associate with a lot of the people that went and came back and, uh, you know, the dealings they, they went through. Well, when I started teaching here in 1972, <coughs> uh, many veterans were coming back from Vietnam and they not, were not well, to, well greeted, of course, uh, because of the unpopularity of the war. And uh, our first campus uh, was Thomason Hospital. They had some classes at Thomason Hospital and high schools at night. But a contract was signed with the U.S. Army that we would, could use old buildings at Logan Heights in Northeast El Paso. You remember those buildings? I think so. The old buildings that yes. uh, were training facilities. So they took those down. And so we were out in Northeast El Paso for about seven years. We got five years, an extension of two years, to be out in those old buildings teaching classes. So I have a lot of memories. Uh, now that area is close to Chapin High School. Correct. It's in that general vicinity where some of our early classes were. Yes. And these veterans were coming back and they were rather depressed and demoralized because of the greeting or lack of greetings they got coming back from that war. So that was my era too, was uh, during that period of time. Most of my students were men, not women or girls, coming out of high school. They were primarily, about 70% or so were men, most of them veterans from the war in Vietnam. Some were three-timers, wow. World War II, Korea, and Vietnam. Wow. Well, it was a wow. So that's kind of maybe your favorite. Uh, what about the ones that were the hardest to actually put up, to get up? Is the World War II one the biggest one? Yes, yes. Was that the hardest one to actually lay the foundation and get constructed? Yes, it was, because not only did we, you know, help lay the foundation, but we would also, you know, help install. Uh, you, we would get a crane, whatever it took, to actually get the monument in place. Mm -hmm. And uh, yes, that's probably one of the, the hardest in the uh, the being in the construction business and working with something like this, was it's a work of art as well as a work of history. Do you have tingling sensation as you're seeing the cranes bring these things down and you're putting it together and then you see it and you step back and take pictures? Oh, yes. Yes, it's, it's a real warm feeling, you know, to know that you're able to do something uh, that, you know, means a lot to so many people. Mm -hmm. And, you know, these people, when they go and they see these monuments, I mean, you, you could see their, you know, their emotions, their sentiments, and it's, it's re re very gratifying to know that you've done something that uh, is, you know, for everybody to, to enjoy and to. It could, could last forever, so <laughs> some of this marble lasts for a long time. Yes, yes, <laughs> correct, and, uh, you know, they're just so, they're just so appreciative, too. And I'm sure when you have relatives or friends that come to El Paso, mm -hmm. one of the first places you're going to take them to see is right there. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes, it's right right around, uh, you know, I, I grew up in Northeast, and I've stayed in Northeast. Mm -hmm. uh, my business is in Northeast, so, you know, I've got a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of pride for Northeast and a lot of, uh, you know, close, uh, you know, feelings for Northeast. Well, the last one I was out there for the dedication was DiMaggio's. It has his and his wife's name on it. Correct. And about uh, two or three weeks after that, um, my wife ended up buying a new car and we went out there to take some pictures with her new car and it has an opening in the top and I was standing up and waving and things like this out there and he saw us and came over and engaged us in conversation and naturally he says, that's mine over there. <laughs> <laughs> I said, yes, I was there when it was dedicated, I remember. Yes. So yes, that's where he yes. takes people first too. Oh yes, yes, yes. We've, we've had a lot of people really. Uh, and we need to remember behind all of this joy was an awful lot of sorrow. Oh, yes. Because these monuments are to people that sacrifice. These monuments are to some people that go out there and they have limbs missing because of their service to this nation. So yes. it's a treasure for us as a tourist place, as a place of memories, but it's also a place that, that indicates the sacrifice of some of these people that have decided to make El Paso their home. Yes, yes, especially, you know, not only for them, but even for you know, uh, relatives of the deceased that actually, uh, mm -hmm. you know, deceased in these wars, these, uh, so it's, you know, we've had a few, you know, parents really emotional that, you know, while well, my son is on that wall, right. you know, his name is on that memorial wall. Well, when the traveling uh, replica of the Vietnam Memorial Wall came to El Paso 2002, I was asked to come out as Uncle Sam, 
And one of the men there, he had a Jeep, a World War II Jeep as an exhibit. And my wife and I engaged him in conversation. And he said, I want to walk you over here and show you this panel. I said, okay. So we go and he names off these 11 names. And he said, that was my unit. They all died and I lived. I don't know why God let me live. You know, he had this survivor's grief experience and guilt <clears throat> experience. And we said, well, maybe he has something for you to do. And you're here today sharing your message with others and what those guys meant to you. I said, let me walk you to this panel. We walked over to a panel and we'd been out the day before and my wife had went gone with me the second day. At that panel was the name of the husband of one of her cousins that was stationed here at Fort Bliss. He was handsome, he was a captain, he was all for defending the country. He went to Vietnam and he was one of the early ones to die wow. in the war. He did not die from a combat injury but from the flipping of the Jeep in a combat area mm. and he died. His name is on the first panel wow. of that wall. So we got some paper and we etched and scratched his name onto that paper as a lot of people, were. you've seen people do that I'm sure. Yes and those memories, that is in our keepsake items at home right now. So we have memories, what I call crystal moments. Yes. And you have some crystal moments with regard to the building of this monument. Are, are you hearing of any other projections of any other things that they want to put there? Uh, as of right now, I'm not. Okay. You know, like I said, uh, I know we've done a, uh, done a lot of uh, improvements to the area itself. You know, we just got through uh, putting down an asphalt uh, Drive right. all the way around the uh, the complex, right? And uh, you know we've done the uh, driveways leading into the complexes, and uh, you know we've 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 probably have uh, donated most of the work, and what we don't know don't donate we just do it at our cost. You know, cost for the cement and all of the other things. Correct, that correct, and you know, uh, and, you know, Job Concrete has also donated uh, probably all the concrete for that site. Well, that's a labor of love. And one of the things I like to stress for us with this program is community service. It's not what you get from life. It's what you give to life. It's what you can do in serving your community. And that's what you've been doing. And thank you for your service. No, no, oh, thank goodness. you. It's, it's, it's an honor, really, to, to be able to, you know, uh, do something like this. You know, uh, God has blessed me. And uh, I believe in giving back to the community. Yeah. Uh, a lot of the times, you know, uh, we don't have work for our employees and that's when we put them out or do all this work at the flag mm -hmm. so that you know it helps everybody right you know it helps them get a paycheck it helps us build the flag and it's it's a win-win now, now you do more than that you have to make a living what are some of the the more significant jobs you've had that you take some pride in that's away from that monument uh, we do a lot of work for uh fort bliss uh, we've done probably over 3,500 uh, homes. And what we do is we're concrete uh, contractors. So we lay down all the foundations for these houses. And uh, that's probably, you know, one of my most rewarding jobs is doing work for the government. You know, these homes for our military people mm -hmm. because, you know, we know that they're out there fighting for our country, they're defending our country, and, you know, they need a place for their families. And well, it used to be they had pretty poor housing around there and the old Logan Heights area that people were living in and they tore a lot of those down and built new houses. You said 3,500? 3,500 from uh, 2005 to 2015. Uh, there was a total of 3,500 homes here in Fort Bliss. Good grief. Yes. And those people are living in those homes and they don't even know about you. <laughs> probably not, probably not, <laughs> but those are nice homes like you said. But you yeah. laid a foundation. We laid the foundation. Yeah, a lot of people don't realize the foundations that other people lay that they are standing on as they move through their lives. Yes, and you know, uh, foundation is probably the most important part of the house. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah well, you can look around the country and see what's happening with some of the homes as their foundations are cracking in half and so on and breaking up. Correct, so it's, it's a very important part of the home. You know, we're the first ones to get in there and and make sure that uh, the home has something to sit on. Well, there are a lot of Bible stories about that. And there are a lot of nursery rhymes and things and nursery stories about that too, about laying the good foundation. 
Otherwise, the wind will come and it will blow everything away. <laughs> away. Correct. Tear it down and it will collapse. Yeah, so it's, it's just ironic that that's my line of work because, you know, I do believe in. Did you your know. father start your company? How did your company get started? Yes, my father immigrated from uh, <coughs> Mexico in search of the American dream in 1950. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he just did a lot of various little jobs until uh, probably about 1966, 67 is he decided to, uh, you know, become an entrepreneur and just started doing little sidewalk jobs, little concrete work jobs. Mm -hmm. And that's how we got in the concrete <coughs> business. Just, you know, he was had a two, three man operation. I worked with my dad all through high school. You know, I wasn't uh, able to enjoy sports or anything like that because my dad had me working, but now I thank him for it. Oh my goodness. Well, I can tell you, I know how hard that is because I, uh, we live on the east side uh, close to Montwood Shopping Center and bought a house built in the 60s and I went to build a sidewalks around the back and do some things and I went and bought a cement mixer and then we'd have sand brought and put it beside the house and and my son would help get out there with a shovel and get a tan and he'd be mixing it and I'd be putting it down and all that stuff like putting the wood foundation and when you finish it it gives you a sense of pride that you did that it does and I've had relatives that have been builders, building contractors in Lubbock and, and in the Fort Worth area and so on. And they take us and show us what they helped build. One in Fort Worth area, Arlington area, he'd show us, I helped build the, the structural work that put that bridge in right there. Right. <laughs> Correct. And you look at that and you hope they sure use the right mix of sand and cement or concrete to get the cement yes. in order to come out with the right mix. I guess it's the cement in with sand to get the concrete, right? Correct. That's yeah. the way the chemistry goes. Yes. Did you ever study chemistry? I did it. You know, I, uh, I've got a high school uh, degree in 1975 from uh, Urban High School here in Northeast. Okay. And uh, right out of high school, I'm the first uh, generation uh, in the U.S. to graduate from high school, period. Congratulations. Well, thank you. Yeah. So, you know, back in the day, I guess college didn't really seem like, uh, I, I felt like I had met my goal of, you know, being the first. Get out of high school. Yeah, yeah so uh, I went to go work for a local lumber yard, uh, Cashway Building Materials. Okay. And that was my college. I was there for about five years and uh, went in as a stock boy. When I left Cashway, I was uh, assistant manager of the store. So that's my, that was my college. That's where I learned how to manage people, you know, how to deal with customers, mm -hmm. how to deal with uh, a lot of contractors, believe it or not. So when I left Cashway in 1980 is when I, I knew a lot of contractors. So they actually gave us a lot of work to where my dad business of two, three employees, you know, just started booming. And uh, so I, I give a lot of thanks to uh, Cashway for giving me my college education that I did. Yes, you've learned so much on the job, but you needed more than that, so you did go further. Yes, 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 yes. Like I said, you know, it's it's a it, it's a blessing from the start to the finish. I mean, the way my dad introduced me to the trade, uh, you know, how he would, uh, uh, you know, he, he he set the stepping stones for our company. Mm -hmm. You know, he you know he. Uh, like I said, when he came to the U.S., you know, he didn't know a word of English. Mm -hmm. And I would see him sitting in his truck every day with his dictionary, just translating. Now, now I've asked this question occasionally, not often, but even sometime out in the community. Have you done any work across the state line? Have you ever done anything over in New Mexico or in, in Juarez? Uh, not in Juarez, but we do have uh, license in several states. You know, we do work in New Mexico, in Albuquerque, uh, uh, even Las Cruces, you need a, a separate license in El Paso. Okay. Uh, Santa Fe, you know, we're up in Houston, we're up in uh, Colorado Springs. Uh, so we, we work in mo multiple states. Is that mostly housing and buildings? Uh, mostly for, once again, you know, for the government, for the uh, military housing. Uh, we did a thousand uh, foundations there in uh, Fort Carson probably a couple years ago, and we're actually up there again doing a couple hundred more. Well, El Paso seems to be well known for building contractors and some building in other places, such as, was it McKee that built some of the facilities at White Sands? Yes. And then you have others that, um, Hunts? The Hunts. Have become well known and prospered? Yes. With some of the building. Yes, as a matter of fact, uh, Hunts, uh, we do a lot of the military work for them in other states. So uh, you subcontract? Yeah, we're They're subcontract. the major contractor and then you subcontract. Correct. Yes, so they're major contractors. They do the whole thing, and then we just do the concrete portion. Okay. 
Let's give a practical lesson. We have a few minutes. Sure. Give a practical lesson to some young person that's watching you. You used the word entrepreneur a while ago. What advice would you give to someone that might be interested in going into business in general or especially in building? What advice would you give to start with? I would say, you know, the the first thing is, you know, you, you just have to go out there and give it your best. Uh, you know, when we started, like I said, I mean, uh, I remember just, you know, living day by day. I mean, we would put out a little ad in the newspaper, the Sun Chopper back then, mm -hmm. saying we do rock walls, we do concrete work. And, uh, you know, sure enough, you know, some person would call that night and say, hey, you know, uh, we accept your bid and can you go ahead and start tomorrow and and just don't give up you know I mean there were some times where I said well you know what maybe I better go back to Cashway you know mm -hmm. right. there I had a, sp a steady paycheck mm -hmm. but no you know we stuck it out and like I said uh, you know it's, it's just a matter of, of giving it uh, all you've got do it with gusto do it with gusto <laughs> yes just give it all you got and you know don't be afraid of uh, a failure sometimes mm -hmm. you know like I said it was many times where you know it seemed like you know we just weren't gonna have any more work and keep your eye on the go keep your eye on the go and you know always always and and this is probably another thing that I think Cashway is they taught me that uh, your customers are number one and your employees are number one mm -hmm. and uh, if you take care of those two people your customers and your employees uh, you really can't go wrong yeah. I remember by face, I can remember the owner of Cashway when it was Airways and out in Northeast, but I can't remember his name. Jim Shelton. Jim Shelton. Okay, Jim, Jim Shelton. Shelton. Thank yes. you very much. Yes. Yeah, I heard that reputation. I've heard reputations of some other <laughs> business people that they thought about themselves and their bottom line of their profits less than their workers. Correct. Correct. But you know, you don't get the best work out of people unless you show that they're worthy. Correct. And that's still, you know, our number one principle. Uh, Today, Mambella Contractors is a uh, customer uh, and, and uh, employee uh, valuation. We value our customers, we value our employees. Okay. And, uh, you know, that's a part of the, the, what's led to our success. Didn't I see something on the news about some religious figure that was brought to El Paso and that you did a contract to build some walls to protect that? Is that the right one? Was you the con were you the contractor of that one? For some church that brought in something from Mexico, a statue. Oh yes, yes. Uh, uh, Father uh, Arturo Banuelos was given a statue of Our Virgin of uh, Guadalupe. Okay. From Mexico, it's made out of uh, cantera. And it's what is that? Cantera is just like a natural stone mm -hmm. that comes from the mountains in in Mexico, and uh, it's a thirty foot statue, and uh, Father wanted to build a shrine. Uh, it's the first shrine in the United States. 30 feet? 30 feet tall. Golly, that's way above this building. Yes, yes. And uh, once again, you know, that was that was a big task because to get that from Mexico all the way to here, uh, El Paso, and then to build the foundation for that structure again, you know, took a lot How of... How deep uh, do you think the cement had to be? That one on that one had to be probably about eight feet deep. About eight feet deep. Yes. Were, was your company involved in getting that statue back? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Well, what? we got it. Uh, no, Father had it brought into uh, El Paso. And he had it we, brought to El Paso. And then from the warehouse in El Paso, we brought it into the location. And you stood it up? We stood it up. Uh, it came probably in about four or five different Now, places. where is that located? It's located on the corner of Saul Kleinfeld and uh, Pebble Hills. It's at St. Oh uh, Mark's Catholic Church. St. Mark's Catholic Church. Yes, yes. And uh, that was. Is it, I guess with being 30 feet tall, you can see it even if it's in the backyard of the church. Oh, yes, yes. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's got a waterfall in the back. It's got, uh, it's got like a little stadium where people can sit and worship. And uh, So that's open. If we found a parking space, we could walk in and go look at it? Yes. Yes, yes, and a lot of people take flowers to the Virgin Mary and mm -hmm. pray to her, and uh, it's, it's, if you haven't seen it, you got to get out there. And oh, yeah, well, I need to do it. that. I'm sure there, again, something that when your relatives and friends come to town, you take them to the <laughs> Trans Mountain campus, big flag first, and then you take them over there. Yes, <laughs> correct, <laughs> correct, yes. Uh, uh, there's nothing else that big that you've done in El Paso, right? I mean, as far as structurally, uh, probably not. But I mean, you know, as far as jobs, I mean, you know, we've we've done any any 
we've gotten contracts anywhere from you know a couple of thousand dollars to uh, ten million dollar contracts. So mm -hmm. you know we we uh, like I said we've been very blessed, and uh, you know we also you know believe in in giving back. So the shrine, you know, a lot of the work there was also donated. Well, I can tell from your attitude, you are a servant. You have a servant attitude. You're not looking for a monument built to the Mambella Company. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Your company is in the business. You've got to be in the business to make a living and pay the bills and pay the people that you contract with for the supplies and things. But I can tell from your attitude and, your, and the way that you're presenting this that you love being a servant. Yes, like I said, I, I am a, a big believer that, you know, we're here on earth for one reason, you know, and one reason only, and that's, you know, to help others. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, God has blessed uh, me, my company, all of us, and I believe in giving back, and uh, it's, you know, it's not about, you know, how much money we can make, it's about, you know, how much can we give back. Yeah, right. And, uh, you know, God has never felt this. I mean, I've always, you know, I'm blessed. Uh, with my family, with uh, my business, yeah, and uh, it just seems like, you know, the more we give, the more God gives us back. So. Well, we're not here to help you get contracts <laughs> by any means, but we do want to give you a chance to put up a telephone number and a website, if you wish, so people can contact you about where these places are they'd like to see, but also sure. if they might want to hire you for your service. Sure. Uh, my uh, office number is uh, area code 915 751 Two seven six one. Okay. And we do have a website. It's www.mimbellacontractors.com. Spell, spell Mimbella for us. Mimbella, it's M I M B E L A. Okay. Mimbella. Yes, sir. Okay. Well, our time is about gone here. Any last word? No, just like I said, uh, thank you for having me here. And uh, like I said, it's, it's, it's an honor to be able to. to give back to the community and to, you know, do, you know, what we've been able to do. It's a pleasure to meet you. Likewise. You're one of my heroes. No, well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I just met you and you're already one of my no, heroes. No, thank you. Well, thank you very much. And I hope all of you enjoyed this little conversation we had with John Mimbella and talking about some of the things that are here in El Paso that you didn't even know about, or you may have seen but didn't know the foundation that laid some of these things. Thanks for watching. I'm Leon Blevins. <music>